Welcome back, guys. So, we're now on, let's look at the chapter one. Chapter one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Chapter eight now, called The Brown Hen. Now, this chapter, the title doesn't give much away because we have been looking at Grandma and she's grown. And at the end of this chapter, her head was just hitting the top of the roof and George really hoped that it wouldn't come out of the top of the roof. So, so we called the brown hen. Hmm, not giving much away. I wonder what's going to happen. Let's see, shall we? George stood in the farmyard looking up at the roof. The old farmhouse had a fine roof of pale red tiles and tall chimneys. There was no sign of Grandma. There was only a song thrush sitting on one of the chimney pots singing a song. The old wurzel had got stuck in the attic, George thought. Thank goodness for that. Suddenly, a tile came clattering down from the roof and fell into the yard. The song thrush took off as fast and off fast and flew away. Another tile came down, then half a dozen more. And then very slowly, like some weird monster rising up from the deep, Grandma's head came through the roof. Then her scrawny neck and the top of her shoulders. How am I doing, boy? She shouted. How's that for a bash up? Don't you think you better stop now, Grandma? George called out. I have stopped, she answered. I feel terrific. Didn't I tell you I had magic powers? Didn't I warn you I had rizzly in the tips of my fingers? But you wouldn't listen to me, would you? You wouldn't, didn't listen to your old grandma. You didn't do it, grandma, George shouted back to her. I did it. I made you a new medicine. A new medicine? You what rubbish, she yelled. I did, I did, George shouted. You're lying as usual, Grandma yelled. You're always lying. I'm not lying, Grandma. I swear I'm not. The wrinkled old face high up on the roof stared down suspiciously at George. Are you telling me you actually made me a new medicine all by yourself? She shouted. Yes, Grandma, all by myself. I don't believe you, she answered. But I'm very comfortable up here. Fetch me a cup of tea. The brown hen was pecking around in the yard, close to where George was standing. The hen gave him an idea. Quickly, he uncorked the medicine bottle and poured some in, um, on the brown, some of the brown stuff on the spoon. Watch this, Grandma! He shouted. He crouched down, holding the spoon out of the hen. Chicken! He said, chick, 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 chicken! Come here, have some of this. Chickens are stupid birds and very greedy. They think everything is food. This one thought the spoon was full of corn. It hopped over, put his head to one side and then uh, looked at the spoon. Come on, chicken, George said. Good chicken, chick, chick, chick. The brown head stretched out its neck towards the spoon and went peck. It got a beak full of medicine. The effect was electric. Shrieked, um, shrieked the hen um, and it was shot up straight in the air like a rocket it went as high as the house and there and down it came into the yard splosh and there it sat with its feathers all sticking out from its body there was a look of amazement on its silly face George stood watching it grandma on the roof was watching it too the hen got up to its feet. It was rather shaky. It was making a funny gurgling noises and its throat, its beak was opening up and shutting. It seemed like it was a pretty sick hen. You've done it now, you stupid boy, Grandma shouted. The hen's going to die. Your father will be after you now. You give, he'll give you the socks and serve you right. All of a sudden, black smoke started pouring out of the hen's beak. It's on fire, Grandma yelled. The hen's on fire. George ran to the water trough to get a bucket of water. That hen will be roasted and ready for eating any moment, Grandma shouted. George sloshed the bucket of water over the hen. And there was a sizzling sound and the smoke went away. The old hen laid its last egg, Grandma shouted. 
Hens don't do any laying after they've been on fire. Now that the fire was put out, the hen seemed to be better. It stood up properly. It flapped its wings. It crouched down low to the ground as though it was getting ready to jump. It did jump. It jumped so high in the air, it turned and it did a complete somersault and then it landed back on its own feet. It's a circus hen, Grandma shouted back from the rooftop. It's a flipping acrobat. Now the hen began to grow. George had been waiting for this to happen. It's growing, he yelled. It's growing, Grandma, look, it's growing. Bigger and bigger, taller and taller it grew. Soon the hen was about four or five times its normal size. Can you see it, Grandma? George shouted. I can see it, boy, the old girl shouted back. I'm watching it. George was hoping about hopping about on one foot to the other with excitement, pointing the, um, at the enormous hen and shouting, It's had the magic medicine, Grandma. It's growing just like you did. But there was a difference between the way the hen was growing and the way Grandma grew. The hair, the grand, when Grandma grew taller and taller, she got thinner and thinner. The hen didn't. It stayed nice and plump all along. Soon... It was taller than George and it didn't stop there. It went right on growing until it was about as big as a horse. Then it stopped. Doesn't it look marvellous, Grandma? George shouted. It's not as tall as me, Grandma shouted out. Compared with me, the hen is titchy small. I am the tallest of them all. So that's the end of that chapter. The next chapter is called The Pig, The Bullocks, The Sheep, The Pony and The Nanny Goat. So there's lots of different animals here. What do you think George is going to do now? Hmm. Well, we'll have to wait and find out tomorrow. See you then.